Hey there YouTube, it's 3D for Life back with another 3D print video for you guys. I know it's been a long time since I posted a video. Hopefully the wait's been worth it. I've been really busy with work. Today we're going to install and set up a Creality silent board, the 4.2.7 version, and we'll get to it right after this. Okay guys, well here it is, the Creality Silent Board version 4.2.7. I did order this kit from Amazon. I will post a link down in the description so that you guys can order the same kit if you choose to. Let's open it up and see what we've got inside. So this is from a seller called First Layer. They're on Facebook, they're on Amazon. I've ordered quite a few products from them. I'm very happy with them. They sell really top-notch stuff. Customer service is fantastic. So again, I'll post a link down in the description for this kit if you decide to get it. This kit comes with some Capricorn Bowden tubing as well as upgraded pneumatic couplings that have the metal teeth. And it comes with the stiffer yellow bed springs. It comes with a couple extra in case you was, or one extra in case you was to lose one while installing or you decide to put one on your extruder motor. And then here we have the board itself. So right off the bat, one of the first things you're gonna notice differences between this board and the stock board is this board is fused. So hopefully that can protect against any issues you could possibly have if you have a short circuit or something short out on the board and uh, possibly save you from purchasing another board. So you can see you have uh, everything's plainly labeled for all your motor hookups. That uh, has a dedicated BL touch right here set up if you wanna use it. However, I'm going to be using the Z-axis because that's what I'm comfortable with. Um, I might explore this at another date, but for today, we're just going to install the BL Touch as the Z-axis so we can use it as an end stop. And uh, that's about it on the board, I think. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get to the machine and we're going to get this installed next. So I have already moved my main board and my Ender 3 Pro. Uh, I'll post a case or a link for this case down in the description down in the description of this video. I think that this case is nice in case you want to do any work on your printer. You can see my printer is not flipped upside down right now, which is a huge plus to me. So I'll post a link for that down in the description. Uh, there's plenty of videos on removing your main board from the stock location if you want to replace it. So this is going to be the same thing. It's just my board is not going to be in a stock location. I'm gonna try and explain this the best I can, and I hope I have the camera in tight enough, and I've tried to add some extra lighting so everybody can see what's going on. I'm gonna do my best to keep my hands out of the way and explain what I'm doing as I'm going. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and unhook this. This is for the uh, BL Touch add-on, which I won't be needing anymore. The, uh, this little pin board here, since I'll be using a port for uh, the main board. Also, this board as well has a bootloader already installed, if I didn't say that already. This uh, version 4.2.7 already has a bootloader installed. So it's running Marlin 2.0.1, I believe, out of the box. So you, it is as easy to flash it as you just put in a thumb drive, compile your new version of Marlin and upload it. So we're going to go through here and cut these zip ties, making sure to not cut any wires. I also recommend taking a picture of your board before you get started in case you was to forget where anything goes. I've done a few of these, so I already have a few different pictures. So I'm not going to pause to take a picture right now, but it's something you'll want to have in the future when you go to do anything like this. You want to make sure you have that picture before you get started in case you forget where anything goes. So one of the hardest things about doing this is this right here. In fact, I'm going to remove the board to show it to you better. Whoop, just had a power flicker for some reason. 
Uh, let me get my light booted back up. There we go. So Creality puts so much hot glue on these connectors. It, I mean, it really isn't even needed. There's just so much and it's so hard to get off. And that's the main, the main thing that I think is the hardest about doing this is just getting all the hot glue off of everything to be able to even replace your stock board. Oh, let's see, did I get them all? Nope, missed that one right there. Okay, so now my main board's loose. So now it'll be a little bit easier to show all this hot glue to you guys. So, let's see if I try and get it on the camera. There's a bunch of hot glue on all these connectors. So all I'm gonna do is take these little clippers right here that come with your printer and I'm gonna clip all these little spots of hot glue. I'm just gonna clip with the direction of the connector against the input that it's into. And it's gonna be on all your connectors. If we can just pull that out. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and hook all my motors. Dropping screws everywhere. Now we're here. I'll, these are the thermistor wires, and then in stock wires and fan wires. So these wires right here are for your power supply. Go ahead and find a flathead screwdriver here. Okay, sorry about that guys. Had to go dig up a screwdriver. My wife walked up here and robbed mine at some point in time, so I had to go find one. Okay, so the next steps we're gonna do is we're gonna take loose these connections around here. You'll need a flathead screwdriver. These are gonna be for your power supply, your Let's see here. So these are the wires for your hot end, and then you have one for your power supply, and then you have uh, board power, and then you have your main power coming in. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect all of those. And again, you know, if you wanna keep from getting confused, in fact, we can do that now. We're going to go ahead and as we disassemble this board, we're going to reassemble into our new board that we're going to be installing. Okay, now all of our connections are loose and they'll be ready to accept power. So we're going to go ahead and hook in our main wire first. We're going to hook in the red on the right and the negative on the left. And if you look here on the bottom of the board, it is labeled which side is positive and which side is negative. Get them tightened down. And you don't need to go too super snug with this stuff, guys. I mean, we are essentially just completing a circuit. You know, you don't want anything to be loose but you don't want anything to be over tight either because then you could risk damaging a screw, stripping a screw, uh, so on. We wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. We also don't wanna damage our new board. So the next thing we're gonna take loose is gonna be a red wire. And then a black wire. And these wires right here, these are going to be the power for your fan in your hot end. Now these should go in in the exact same order. We'll go ahead and look. This board is labeled. Positive is gonna be on the end and the next wire is gonna be our negative, our black. So we're gonna go ahead and install our hot end fan wires.
if my hands are getting in the way too much guys I do apologize I'm doing my best to keep them out of the way with all this extra lighting and everything in here so that you guys can tell what's going on <clears throat> these next wires we're going to unhook these are going to be the power for our bed black one seems pretty tight. There we go. Tell you what, we're going to go ahead and unhook these for the wires for the hot end just to get it out of the way to take it out of the equation because the hot end is pretty much just a controlled short. It's, you know, it's just completing a circuit more or less. Not, I shouldn't say a controlled short. It's just completing a circuit. Therefore, it doesn't matter what polarity they go in. So we'll go ahead and check for our bed on the bottom, labeled the same way, positive and then negative. and then our hot end wires. And again, as I said, these are not polarity sensitive. All you're doing is completing a circuit. We're going to start hooking our connections back in. So the first connection we're going to do is going to be our print cooling fan, which is going to go in the first fan spot. <clears throat> and then our fan for our board. Oh, it's over here, so I'm going to leave it for last. I'm actually going to plug that in last. This next connection we have is for a filament runout sensor. I'm gonna skip that for now. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start hooking in all of the rest of our wires. Let's see here. So we're just gonna go in order here. We're gonna hook in our X-axis motor. Then we're going to hook in our E-axis motor. And right here is our Z-axis motor. And then our last wire we have is going to be our Y-axis motor. So we're gonna continue that same trend on this other side. We're going to do our X-axis end stop first. And then our Y axis end stop next. Try and keep this on camera for you guys. There we go. Be coming out of your bed wiring here. And then your thermistor for your hot end is going to be this white connection, and we're going to hook it in here. Next, we're going to do our BL Touch wires, which is what our Z stop is now. So we're going to hook in our BL Touch into the Z axis end stop. And then we're going to hook in our BL Touch wires into the first three pins. So I've had to do some troubleshooting on my BL Touch, so just wanted to share this in case anybody else runs into this issue. This is the orientation I had to change my wires on the BL Touch that I have that's for the kit. So I had to change it to where the blue was in front for ground, 
and then the red is the V, and then the yellow is the N. So I did that, hooked this up, and hooked this pin header into the Z. Uh, right, and here we are running with the Creality 32-bit silent board, just as quiet as it can be. Now, you will still hear some noise. <clears throat> the noise you're hearing is actually the hot end fan, which I have already ordered a new one to be silent, and the PSU fan is the loudest things about this printer. It also does a softer homing for auto home than the stock reality board. So pretty happy with it. I've had a few prints off of it so far. They've come out really good. This is the start of something I'm printing for somebody I know. So all in all, I'd say it's a worthwhile investment. So I think that about wraps up this video, guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, you guys take it easy, be safe, and keep on printing.